composition is the arrangement of visual elements within the format. The first type of composition we're going to look at is symmetry. These ancient Egyptian and Minoan and early Greek sculptures are symmetrical, meaning that each side is a mirror image of the other if you divide the figure in half or very close. If you stand this way, you'll find it to be somewhat formal, maybe a little bit rigid, but that was the way these early civilizations sculpted the human body. Symmetry is, again, where one side is a mirror image of the other, symmetrical compositions. Symmetry is used a lot in religious art, in various cultures and religions, perhaps to suggest a perfect order that is more in tune with the spiritual world than the physical world that we inhabit. In the classical Greek era, around 300 BCE, sculptors developed a more naturalistic way to sculpt the human body. And this, if you're standing in a rigidly symmetrical pose and just relax, typically what you'll do is shift your weight to one hip, one leg. And to do that, you need to compensate and balance by tilting your shoulders and your pelvis in different ways. This pose is called the contrapposto pose, counter pose. And it's a relaxed, confident pose that the Greek sculptures in the classical period employed. When we think about this kind of composition, it's not symmetrical because each side, the two sides are not mirror images, but they are balanced. And that idea of balance is really important in Western art and many forms of Eastern art. Asymmetrical balance basically means that you have different objects or different visual elements on either side of the picture plane, but you have what we call equal visual weight. So the weight of these two large objects or elements is balanced by these four smaller elements. Their arrangement, their size, the fact that there's more of them balances the two large ones. In this drawing, we see a literal uh, illustration of balance where you have this big heavy object signifying visual weight and then smaller objects that balance it out. If you look at this abstract painting by Paul Clay, you don't see the exact same thing on either side, but you have roughly the same distribution of black lines of the dark rust color shapes, the oranges, the tans and the whites, it's all somewhat balanced. And this still from the Miyazaki film, My Neighbor Totoro, if we divide it in half, we have this big Totoro element here, just one thing, but it's very big and important. But it's balanced by the two things, by the bus stop sign and by the young girl there waiting for the bus with her little sister on her back. Later in the Greek era, Hellenistic sculptures were created that showed an unbalanced pose and typically these were very dramatic and included a sense of motion and often were based on a diagonal line, which also adds to that sense of imbalance and tension. An unbalanced composition is one where the visual weight of one side is not balanced on the other side. Unbalanced compositions like these tend to create a sense of tension, of uh, something about to happen, and uh, they're not as calm and don't have the relaxed impact that a balanced composition does. 
This is a neoclassical landscape, and if we divide it in half roughly, we have the big hill on this side and lots of trees and some architecture up here, but it's balanced by the bigger trees here and the figures in the foreground, bigger than the small figures there, carefully balanced. Dividing this in half, we have a rough balance uh, God here and this cape with all these other figures balanced by Adam with some of the landscape. Look at these images and see if you think they're balanced, unbalanced, or symmetrical. Whenever you look, analyze a composition, think about the two sides. Are they equally, do they have equal visual interest? Balanced, unbalanced, or symmetrical? When you do your sketches, I want you to do a certain number of them with balanced compositions. So using your hands as a frame, look around, could be outside, inside, any sort of arrangement of objects or visual elements, and look for balanced compositions on some of your sketches. Using your hand to frame objects, we have this frame that divides the picture plane in half. We have one large tall element here and it's balanced somewhat by the big bowl of apples. You can use the same image but moving your point of view in this case to look and find a symmetrical view where you're divided in half. You have half the apples one plant on one side and half the apples and one plant on the other side. So depending on how you frame what's in your visual view, you can find uh, sometimes a symmetrical composition, a balanced one or an unbalanced one. When you're looking for symmetry, there are plenty of things out in the world that are symmetrical. Most of the buildings on Hanover's campus are symmetrical when viewed from the front. This is the Duggan Library. It's designed to be symmetrical. You can always arrange things in a symmetrical composition like this. Uh, the front of a car is symmetrical. Some elements in nature are symmetrical. When you're drawing these compositions, you definitely want to draw the frame. And then make sure to draw a line down the center to make sure that your symmetrical compositions are the same on both sides. This is also an important thing to do when you're drawing anything that is symmetrical so you can help draw the actual object correctly. Another type of sketch you'll be doing is sketches with value. In this case, there are three values, the darkest, a medium value, and then white of the paper. So this is a way to generalize and look for the large areas of value within your sketches.